clip on the socket. It's like, a, it's like a uh, tube. Yeah. You guys checking out the rest of the car? Somebody checking the rest of the car? Going into the Baja 1000 is like attending the Super Bowl of all off-road racing. Everybody's coming from all over the world to compete for one position, that first place trophy. Before we left for Ensenada, we had to get the car tested. The uh, alignment took us a few hours. We were getting it all ready. We were getting all the last of our stuff packed up. We were getting our parts packed up. We were heading out to the desert just to test the car. We gotta make sure that it's ready before we head off to Baja. While getting the car ready, Lone Star lent us a hand in getting it prepped. KWI actually drove out here to do clutch testing, we did a 95 mile an hour run just to make sure that that belt was ready to go. All right, we're about to uh, get loaded up here into the desert, test these cars, both cars, the race car and the free run car. And then uh, we're gonna head back here. Hopefully there is no more repairs to be done and we are off to Ensenada. All right, so we're out here near Florence, Arizona. We're doing the final testing on the race car. Man, just got that thing dialed into where it's like riding on a cloud. It's absolutely amazing. So excited to be heading to Baja tonight. We were supposed to leave at nine o'clock this morning. It's now five o'clock in this afternoon. So needless to say, we're a little behind schedule, but we're gonna be going with a little bit of peace of mind that our race car is running flawlessly. <laughs> Uh, you know, I've always said Baja, it gets in your blood. It's, it's hard to get it out and, and it's like a drug and hell, I want another hit. Hey guys, we're getting ready to embark on the first day of pre-running. We got here pretty late last night, or should I say this morning, about 4 a.m. Got up around 9, had some breakfast. We're going to go out and uh, fuel up the car and, uh, and hopefully go kick butt on day one of pre-running. <laughs> you always look for a competitive edge so that means you want the best products available for your application for us that's xps oils this stuff's amazing it's engineered specifically for can-am so you can't get anything better i mean there's not another brand out there that was designed exactly for this machine xps 100 <clears throat> percent okay The Baja 1000 to me. <laughs> so we're heading out. We get to the famous Go Trail. We start doing some drone footage, as you can see. We're, we're just cruising down this Go Trail, and it literally started out as a Go Trail, and now there's there's just enough room to kind of squeak some uh, some vehicles through there. And so we head down the Go Trail. We take off for uh, <clears throat> San Luis. We end up, uh, we, we get gas and we don't, what, what we didn't realize is how far it was and how bad of gas mileage we were gonna get uh, during that section and I think it was due to the sand. 
We end up getting close to uh, San Felipe, and uh, big shout out to uh, Mike Capro. Thanks, man, for uh, loaning us the three gallons. I think we would have been out there a lot longer since uh, we, we got into San Felipe on fumes. We ended up pulling over and taking a few cool shots, which uh, you can see, see here. So Baja is not just a place, it's not just a thing. It's this living, breathing organism that sometimes lets you win and sometimes acts like your crazy ex-girlfriend. No. So in the military, they were doing some training and I thought something that was just really cool and I, I told the guys that uh, you can actually use a handheld radio to light a neon bulb. And the guys were just like, what? I've never heard of this. And so I had to do a demo, demo for them. And so sure enough, I just hooked up the radio and you trigger it right next to a neon bulb and poof, it lights up. And then I did it to the big antenna. And boy, that 50 watt radio, I don't know what I did, but man, it shocked me pretty good. So uh, <laughs> just a fair warning, don't do it with a 50 watt radio. So warning, ladies and gentlemen, don't try this at home. You may get shocked. And this is something that I learned in the military. It also can trigger a bomb. We finally made it to Ensenada and the guys were in for a real treat. I got a big giant mansion on the beach, right on the ocean. And so you had these vast views of the Pacific Ocean. It was something like a 10 bedroom house with more beds than uh, I, don't even, I don't even know, I couldn't even count. It also came with a giant turtle. Like a, I, I think the thing might've been like a couple hundred years old, I have no idea. And uh, the house also had its own driver. And then in case you had an emergency, it had its own fire pole that you could slide down and make it right out to the race car to start the race. So contingency usually happens the day before the race. It's, it's basically a big party where all the cars parade down a certain area and all the vendors set up during the sides. It allows fans and other racers to check out each other's cars and uh, get close to them and, and talk to the racers and talk to the members of the crew. We have a lot of interesting people come up and ask us questions on our Can-Am, our race team, or how we do things. It gives us the opportunity to uh, hand out stickers, which in Mexico is like currency. People go crazy for it. We've also started to hand out candy because it can get pretty expensive to hand out stickers the entire day. So uh, at this year's Baja 1000 contingency, uh, we went up on stage, we had a megaphone, we started getting the crowd going, everybody started yelling, Chapo, Chapo, we started throwing out stickers and candy and t-shirts. Uh, Chapo gave his big announcement up on stage and, uh, and, and 
you know, predicted we'd be on the podium. Fortunately, we didn't. Um, after the podium, we got to go over to the Can-Am booth and Chapo had uh, the opportunity to sign a bunch of uh, posters for fans. People lined up, it was great, everybody was awesome. Uh, it was really cool, we felt like, you know, big important racers, it was really awesome. The Bob 1000 is awesome! Morning of the race, we wake up at a decent hour and we start just double checking everything, making sure everything's good, making sure everybody knows where they go. And uh, I decided to play a little trick on Chapo. Little did I know Chapo was ready for me, so we uh, ended up making a little video out of it and it was pretty hilarious. So many things were going wrong in such a short amount of times, it was almost as if it was a joke. We're getting in the car, trying to get my navigation to work, the Lorance, and it's not working. The map's all blurry, so I'm like, okay, that's okay, that's why we have a backup. So I switch over to my iPad, which runs lead nav, and I'm thinking, all right, here we go, we got it good, and it's not working as intended. Apparently, the subscription expired on race day. This means we started the race with the iPad not working properly. I had to pull out my cell phone, give the iPad, uh, you know, Wi-Fi signal, start logging into uh, iTunes, and, and Chapo's giving me his password, and it's the wrong password, and it's with a capital, it's without a capital. It's total chaos. Have no idea where we're going while we're doing all this. So I finally get it all sorted out, get it downloaded, get the new map going, and, uh, and, and we start trucking on. Once we get on the higher speed, Chapo says something I didn't want to hear. There's something wrong with the car. He's moving the steering wheel back and forth and, and car's not acting correctly and I think we have a flat tire or something and uh, we didn't. We get to the next point where our pit support can help us. We pull in and it's, uh, immediately start assessing the car. A bolt had come loose. Man, I jump out of the car. I got wrenches. I'm trying to tighten stuff up. Finally, we get it nice and snug. I jump back in the car. We take off. Then we get to the part of the course where we're on a paved road and it's a 60 mile an hour zone. We start feeling the car hesitating just a little bit, uh, but we're, you know, we're coming up to our next fuel spot. So we just, you know, brush it off as low on fuel. We pull in, we get fuel, we take back off into the desert and within about five or 10 miles, the car starts hesitating and backfiring. I have no idea what's wrong with it, but I start going through the list in my head. Intake, exhaust, fuel, what could it be? And then uh, I jump down to look at the car at one moment and I see the exhaust is extremely hot and just completely glowing red. We end up pulling over at uh, the San Felipe airport and we start ripping apart the car completely. Come to find out we are running out of time and uh, it's uh, saddening to say that uh, we actually had to call the race somewhere around midnight. And uh, that was the end of that Baja 1000. Big shout out to my team, Chapo Racing, all the guys for 2018 that came out. I hope you guys come back for 2019. I really look forward to another fun adventure um, uh, and going on it. Obviously, Danny, number one mechanic, you know, uh, we couldn't do this without you. That's a, that's a big given. A big thanks to Shock Therapy for just being there mentally, physically, helping us 
one step at a time, helping us figure out and solve any problem, whether it's shocks or not. You guys are there for us. We really appreciate that. <laughs> Big thanks to Nick Bruce at Adrenaline Motorsports. I really appreciate him stepping up and coming to, to uh, help out on the Baja 1000. I uh, wish you would have got to drive. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, make sure you follow us on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and we'll see you at the next race.